your 48 memory is limited. That's a fact. Even if you have a high-end 48, you must understand how memory is being allocated between the kernel, the system I.O. cache, the different buffers, the shared memory, and more. And how can you optimize your memory utilization for maximum performance? Coming up. This item is for every 48 administrator out there. Memory utilization and memory optimization is one of the key fundamentals that you should master. So memory actually is being distributed between the kernel, between the buffers, between the processes, between many operations that are on your 40 OS architecture. And let's take a look at one memory component which is the slab or the slabs those are memory objects that are used by your kernel so dag hardware sys info and slab that is one uh, i believe one command that you are not using frequently and when you press enter you will see all the memory objects that your kernel holds those could be TCP sessions, IP sessions, routes that are used in the cache. Now you can see on the left side the slab name, you can see the size of the slab, and you can see the amount of objects. So these are only one area where your 48 reserves memory. The second place is the DIAG hardware, sysinfo. Now, we have two commands we have the memory and the shared memory once you do so with the memory you will see the total amount of memory the free memory the memory that is used by the buffer the memory that is used by the cached operation now this is important your system input and output uses cache it uses cache uh, very often for logging, for explicit proxy, for when optimization cache is used everywhere on your 48. Now here you can see in the active cache, you can see processes or applications that are actually used often and some that are not used that often. Now if we we'll use the DIAG hardware, sysinfo shared memory you will see memory that is being shared by processes now processes have their own memory allocation a process cannot just get into another process memory allocation it lives on its own proprietary memory allocation but there are different operations that your 48 actually allocates a specific shared memory for different processes to reach. And those can be seen using the DIAG hardware sys info shared memory. Now, another command is the DIAG sysstop, which we have actually uh, used and handled a lot. This actually shows up the different processes that are used on your 48 and the memory allocation for each process. Now you will most likely see processes that consumes lots of memory such as the IPS. You will also see processes as the HTTPS D, the HTTPS daemon, which is actually the graphical user interface that we work on. What we actually see is child processes. So there is not only one process, there's the parent process and there are child processes. All right, so now let's move on to memory optimization tips. Memory optimization can be done in many ways. We will look at a few. So the very first thing, don't just log anything on your firewall policies. There are cases when you need to log security events. There are cases when you need to log all sessions. Do that according to your needs. The second thing, security profiles. Don't just apply any security profiles out there. If you're using antivirus, uh, don't just use any protocol out there. If you're using IPS, IPS is one of the most consuming 
there it is sorry is one of the most consuming security profiles out there its engine actually purses decodes the different protocol looks for patterns looks for an anomalies so use it carefully if you're having a network that is comprised of only windows machine or windows servers don't use signatures that are targeted at linux os or mac os use your ips very carefully now the next thing that you will need to know is about session time to live uh, your session table by default holds sessions for up to an hour that is not necessary in most of the cases and here you can actually use the config system session time to live and you will set the default the default currently is uh, 3600 seconds you can set it to 600 seconds and trust me everything will be all right unless you have applications a uh, specific applications that needs uh, a more longer session time to live but in most cases that is not the case all right now you can also configure that on a firewall specific policy or even on a specific service so you can use the uh, config firewall service custom you can edit let's just name this service uh, let's name it um, ls just for the sake of the name and here you can edit the port sorry for that set not edit tcp port range and let's assume that our tcp is 443 and here you can actually set the session time to leave to uh, 600 also all right now the other place where you can uh, play with this session time to leave is actually when your uh, 48 initiates a tcp session now a tcp session has actually what is known as a three-way handshake it starts with a sin it 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 listens for the scene act and then it replies with the act now between those stages there is a, a time limit now you can change that time limit let's see how you do that using the config system global let's just get out of this one let's clear the page config system global and here you can actually set the TCP half close timer and this TCP half open timer. Now, the TCP half open timer is the time that your 48 actually waits to hear the scene act. That is, it sent the scene request, it waits for the scene act. By default, it waits for 10 seconds. But you can change it. You can change it to 7 seconds. We'll reserve more resources that is memory resources from your uh, 48 the same goes for the half close timer by default it is 120 seconds you can change it to 80 now all of these tweaks should and will make your 48 much more memory friendly